Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to talk about measures of position. One of the most important measures of position is a z-score. Measures of position are important. We need a way of measuring how an item fits into the collection of data and how it compares to another particular item in the collection. There are several common ways of creating such measures and they're usually called measures of position. So what is a z-score? A z-score is the number of standard deviations between a particular piece of data and the mean. For example, consider a set of data where the mean is 75 and a standard deviation is 5. So I've marked off a number line with the mean piece of data in the middle, 75, and I've marked off a scale of 5 units away on each side based on the size of a standard deviation. So I'm gonna mark off on a corresponding number line the z-scores for the data. Since 80 is one standard deviation above 75, it has a z-score of one. Since 85 is 10 units, which is two times five or two standard deviations above 75, this is gonna have a, a z-score of two. Similarly, 90 has a z-score of 3. What do you think the z-score would be for the mean piece of data, 75? If you said 0, you're correct, because 75 is 0 units away from itself. What about the data values that are lower than the mean? If you guess that we're going to use negative values to represent the z-scores for those data values, you're correct. One way to get the z-score for any data value is to find the difference between the data value and the mean and divide by the size of a standard deviation. For example, the data value 80 minus the mean 75 is 5, which if you divide by 5 is equal to 1. This corresponds to the formula z equals x minus x bar over s, where x is the data value, x bar is the mean, and s is the size of a standard deviation. This is a formula you're going to want to remember. We use it a lot to go back and forth between the data values and the number of standard deviations or z-scores of a particular data value. Here's an example of how we can use z-scores to help us compare data sets. Two students who take different history classes had exams on the same day. Jen's score was 83, while Joy's score was 78. Which student did relatively better given the class data shown below? And they give us the class mean. In Jen's class, the Average turned out to be 78. In Joy's class, it was 70. And they tell us the standard deviations. In Jen's class, the standard deviation is 4, meaning a typical score is within 4 units of the mean. Whereas in Joy's class, a standard deviation was 5, which means a typical score is within 5 units of the mean. So the, the scores are a little more spread out in Joy's class. Now you probably know from experience that just because you got a score of 83 and your friend got a score of 78, if you're in two different classes, that doesn't necessarily mean that you did a better job because it might be that your test was easier. But standard deviations can help us to get a better idea of how to compare apples to oranges. So we're going to write down the three important values for Jen's class. Her data value, her score, 83, the mean of her class, 78, and the standard deviation, 4. And then we're going to write down the three important facts from Joy's class, x, 78, x bar, 70, and s equals 5. And now we're going to calculate their z-scores. So the z-score formula is x minus x bar over s. So we're going to find Jen's z-score by taking 83 minus 78 and dividing by 4, which gives us 1.25. Similarly, we'll find Joy's z-score. 78 minus 70 over 5 equals 1.6. So what does this tell us about how well Jen and Joy did relative to each other? Well, by the z-scores, we can tell how their score compares to the other students in their own class. So Jen was 1.25 standard deviations above the average score in her class. Not bad. Joy, though, was 1.6 standard deviations above the average score in her class. So she appears to have done a little bit better relative to her classmates. So despite the fact that Jen had the higher raw score of 83, it appears Joy's 
test might have been a little bit harder. And scoring a 78 actually puts her above more of her classmates. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video. In the next video, we're going to compute and interpret percentiles.